What's up with it, bro? What's cracking, man? Good to be, good to be here. Good to meet you, man. Likewise, my brother. Introduce yourself, let the people know who you are. Yeah, man, it's your boy Burnham Malik, you know what I'm saying? Stepping in, using art, about to give y'all a little, little insight, a little extra, extra sauce, you know what I'm saying? Nothing major. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know you've been at this for quite a while now. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely, definitely. I ain't, yeah, no, yeah. I ain't no rookie. Exactly, <laughs> I'm rookie. I'm sure, definitely sure. a, vet, a vet in this joint now. Yeah, sure. yeah. I know the one thing that kind of, you know, caught your attention, like, caught people's attention recently was the Sorry Not Sorry remix. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they definitely got, uh, I would say, uh, St. Louis eyes on me. Uh-huh. I, I wouldn't really promote to St. Louis for a long time. So, shit, uh, that was kind of like a way for me to kind of put my foot in the door. <laughs> got, a little, got a couple motherfuckers upset. But, shit, for the most part, everybody showed love. Everybody was receptive to it. So, shit, it was, it was, it was love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Andrew shot the video, right? Yeah, Andrew shot the video. Yeah, he cold, he cold with the camera. Yeah, fuck Andrew. Cold, cold. He, he, he quit. Get his business done right, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I respect that type of shit. I respect anybody who do their business and get it done the right way, fast. Yeah. So I, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, um, when you first recorded a song, it was after, you know, on the red track, you said you instantly yeah, got on it. Yeah, instantly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, I heard that song, and I, w- I was already, because, like, I, I got a marketing plan on how I, like, because um, I told myself I needed to start, you know, just introducing my shit more to St. Louis. Mm-hmm. So, shit, I'm, I had a marketing plan already put together, how I wanted, how songs I wanted to put out, everything like that. When that song came out, I'm like, this is a perfect opportunity to just do something real quick, and for the art of it, for the love of it, just drop that motherfucker. And shit, I know motherfuckers gonna react to it just based off the content of the song. So, yeah. shit, I'm like, and it's already going viral. It just everything made sense, you know what I'm saying? I got in the studio like the same day. Shit, as soon as I heard the song, I heard the song that night. So the next day, I got in the studio. Shit, yeah, hit you up. Yeah, the first version I know it did. Yeah, yeah, bro, I'm pretty sure I had the first remix. Period. Yeah, <laughs> like right. for real, that's how quick I did that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Now when you start to hear like feedback, how did you receive it? Uh, no, some people that has a mixed reaction. You know, some people are even fuck with. Yeah. Some people like, um, I, I, I'm from St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I ain't really taking no type of way. Uh, Just, I, I've learned throughout my years of doing music and shit. Like, people gonna gonna uh, gonna have they they perception of you know they perspective pers- perspective on how they view your music. So you can't really take shit to heart with that shit. Like, like a lot of niggas don't probably don't like my style. Just just based off my sound, like how how I'm high pitch when I rap and shit uh-huh. like that. So I don't let none of that shit bother me. I just shit. You, you like it, you don't. But I know somebody gonna like it. So At the shit. end of the day, yeah. yeah. What part of Simmons are you from, really? Uh, shit. I would say, uh, I would say like the. Oh, north. you grew up? I didn't even say where. You yeah, grew I would up. say like the north side, but like uh, I don't know, bro. Like I, I feel like I'm different because I grew up everywhere. You know what I'm saying, like. Like, I, I literally, like, growing up, I spent, the, mo- the longest time I spent at one school was probably, like, two years. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was moving kinda, around. Yeah, I, yeah I was moving around a lot. So, like, when I was first, like, first house I remember, I was on the south side. Like, little, little kid. Then, second crib I remember, shit, I was on the north side for, like, a year. Then, after that, that mom, it's my mom just kept on moving up. Her, she was on the grind hustling, you know what I'm saying? She moved us to Riverview. Shit, at that time, Riverview was considered a, a gooder neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? So that happened when I was, like, nine. So, shit, for the most part, I will probably say, no, that happened when I was, like, six, and I stayed there until I was, like, nine. But I'll say, yeah, for the most part, I spent most of my childhood at Riverview. Uh, like, like the uh, where I lived type shit was in Riverview. But, shit, I... You hung out. But most of my, where I hung out at was on the north side, like... Yeah, she- Cause you know you know where Riverview is and shit like Bell Fountain like right there off the highway, it's literally five minutes from the water top. I mean from the top, you know what I'm saying? Like uh-huh. you you literally right there from downtown. I mean from the city. So my pops used to be out there all the time. I played football in the city and shit. So that's pretty much where I was always at. Like my cousins and shit was always out there. So any incident I ever got in or like any lessons I learned for the most part, I learned them out there. You know what I'm saying? So. But I don't like claiming that because I didn't sleep there, you know what I'm saying, every night. You feel me? Like, I know I know niggas who was out there every night and they struggled, you know what I'm saying, where my mom and them shit, they was fortunate enough to get a little bread and move us to a better neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? So, shit, I wasn't in the struggle as hard as they was in the struggle every day. 
but shit, I was still with them, you know what I'm saying, when it was time to go out and kick it or play and you know, all that type of shit, so yeah, that type of joint. Yeah, so pretty much like you said, you had a pretty decent upbringing. Yeah, for sure, I, I wouldn't, I'm not like, no, I wouldn't say like I'm a, like, privilege or nothing like that, nigga, I definitely come from the struggle in the trenches, but my mama, like I said, she worked her ass off, and like, I, I appreciate that shit, like, a lot of your niggas don't even understand, like, they don't even grasp, like, how hard it is for your people to go out there and hustle for you, and put food on the table, and do all that shit for you, and then for you to go out there and do some dumb shit, and, and blow it all over, and crash out, because you want to be tough, that's really what it be, you know what I'm saying, I grew up around a lot of niggas, like, who really didn't have to do that shit, but that was what was cool, you know what I'm saying? So that's what they did. Shit. I fell victim to that at certain points in my life too, but shit, at the end of the day, that the big values that was instilled in me was to say, shit, nigga, don't be out here doing no stupid shit, get your, get your, get your money, shit, go to school, do what you're supposed to do, you know what I'm saying? They taught me the right morals and values and shit, so shit, that's the shit I be living by now, goddamn me. But those morals, would you say that's what helped you? Or you say you kind of, I guess, backtracked in a sense, as far like with the street shit. Yeah, definitely. But do you feel like those morals that were instilled in you, or just that upbringing, saved you, or kind of kept you away from falling, you know, too deep into this shit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I saw a lot of shit growing up too, though. But it's like. I, it was always my pops and them always made sure like that I understood that that that's just that's not the life you know what I'm saying like 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 I literally like you know, it's crazy because like when I was a kid I don't remember that shit for real like I I it, well I'm, I ain't gonna say I don't remember it but it didn't register but like my pops used to have me on the block with him all the time he was doing all the type of shit <laughs> you know what I'm saying and looking back on it, it probably wasn't the safest place for me to be <laughs> I damn right. mean, but but shit it was like you know that those was like the, the the moments I had to be with him and shit like that you know but uh I don't think that it like like your original question was what are you saying like the uh I would like you feel like that help like you say yeah yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't feel like I don't feel like it uh I feel like it that that shit did help me because like I said, they, they taught me right from wrong, regardless of what I saw, regardless of what I was around, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was my point in saying, like, my pops, I was always around him doing a lot of shit he was doing, but even with that, he always shielded me from that shit, you know what I'm saying? He made sure, like, look away, you know what I'm saying? Don't, just go over there, you know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? He made sure that I was straight and I always knew that that shit was dead, so. I feel like that's really the biggest thing. I had a lot of cousins, big cousins and shit that taught me right from wrong. And then for real, for real, I just saw a lot of motherfuckers fuck up, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I always wanted better for myself. So I see another nigga fuck up. That's just like, shit, that teach me a lesson. God damn me. Okay. Real shit. He on, like yeah, for real, bro. I, I learned from other people. Like, a lot. Like I got cousins and shit that, that done, like, done a whole bunch of crazy shit, bro. And it's just like, damn. I was able to see that early. And that shit, like, taught me, like, no, nah, I don't do that, bro. That's stupid as a motherfucker. You do that, nigga, you're going to be like your cousin. Your dumb ass cousin is over there. You don't want to do that, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know what I'm saying? All that shit taught me and helped me mold to how I am. But shit, that same shit that taught me and molded me to who I am, uh, turn another nigga to a demon, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's all kind of like, you know, that, that in, at the end of the day, that, that household, that parent figure and shit. Because I definitely, my mom and my pops was around for a long time, like together. I remember, like, <laughs> until I was, like, 11, I was the only kid in my whole school that could basically say that shit. Mm. Like, everybody, mom and daddy was divorced. I was the only one that was like, yeah, mom and daddy still together. They was like, damn, your mom and daddy still together? What the fuck? <laughs> they was like, damn, that's, that's, that's hard. I'm like, yeah, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you really don't. So, don't shit, I feel like that did definitely, that definitely helped me, you know what I'm saying? Be more, like, wise and not move stupid and do stupid shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just be more... Stay in the stand out the streets, all that shit. Uh, are you on child? You got brother, sister? No, I got a, uh, I got an older sister, older brother. Uh, I got a younger brother, younger sister. You, you middle child, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was the baby for a minute, but then shit. As soon as I hit high school, my uh, my little sister was born, and then shit, my uh, little brother was born like like six years ago. Mm -hmm. You say your parents were together up until you was like eleven. Yeah. Um, they separate or yeah, they separated yeah. Uh, around that time, like eleven, twelve, something like that. How did that affect you? Uh, 
it definitely affected me. I feel like that shit, that was, I feel like, the moment where in my life I thought about or I was, like, inkling towards being, like, more in the streets heavy. I, and I, looking back, like, at the time, I didn't realize, like, that, that probably was what was affecting that shit. But for real, for real, that probably is, like, subconsciously what was making me, like, want to be like, shit, fuck it, I'm finna be out here kicking with my people. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just just trying to have fun with the homies and shit, just doing random shit. You know what I'm saying? But, shit, when they, when they separated, I didn't have my pops there consistently. You know what I'm saying? He used to always be on my ass and just, you know what I'm saying, making sure that I just, you know what I'm saying, I was on my shit. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to make sure I was a man and I was on my tools. You know what I'm saying? Not bullshitting. So when they separated, shit, I still saw him, but we don't live together. So shit, when I'm just moving around, shit, I'm he ain't around. So that definitely affected that shit a little bit. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it definitely will affect the child, especially how you saying being seeing your parents together for so long, then they separated. Definitely alternates your lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she, she was like, what pissed me off was my mama was she, she tried to like, <laughs> I ain't gonna, well, she was fucking with niggas that I felt like was similar to my daddy, <laughs> and it, and it makes sense, like, <laughs> it makes sense, like that I get older, it's like women, you know, they usually tend to mess with people. They, they like, they like a certain type of blue. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like. I'm like, if you gonna fuck with this nigga, you should back my well get back with my daddy. You know what I'm saying? That's how I used to be like, this nigga ain't no better than my daddy. Like, no, nah, dead ass. Like, nigga, literally, my daddy, everything, one thing I say to my pops, he never, bills always paid. Shit, money always had money, always. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you fucking with other niggas and shit like that, I ain't gonna get into that too much. But it's like, I hated that shit going up, bro. I hated that shit. I'm like, man, these Real niggas shit. are not my pops, bro. You get the fuck on with that shit. <laughs> um, let me get to change the subject a little bit here. Yeah. Um, when exactly did you start to create music or to take it seriously anyway? Uh, I would say I, I first started to like create it or take it. Well, I say I started creating music at like 17. Uh, so like that's like what, 2012? Yeah, like 2012. I I first made my like first song in the studio with my homies just bullshitting, playing around type shit. That's when I first made a song. After that shit, I like I did a little shit here and there, like, but I didn't consider that taking it seriously because I didn't have a plan. I was just dropping music randomly on random days, like not really promoting this shit. You know what I'm saying? I was just bullshit, just basically having fun. I told myself that I was trying to be serious, but I wasn't really being serious. Yeah. I would say when I took it seriously was. 2020, like, or end of 2019, that's when I, like, really started to, like, go hard, like, I, right, I figured out what I want to do, how I'm going to do it, how I'm promote this shit, how I'm going to put it out, boom, and shit, from there, shit, it's been up. Were you going by burner just then? Um, when I first, first started, I was going by burner, mm-hmm. and then, shit, after the years of, like, transitioning, figuring out my sound and all that, I just went, switched it to burner Malik. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. I know that, um... What you, how job you know I'm saying right? You evolve I? Yeah, you evolve you evolve I, yeah. <laughs> That's a dope as concept. Yeah, yeah. A bit like some trap in the closet type thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. had on um, what's her name? Ariel. I did I linked over her. Shout out to Ariel Simone, yeah, man. Yeah, shout out to her, man. Yeah, dope. she did she did a real real good job in the video. Hell sure. yeah, she was doing her thing. You got them cheeks out, I said. She got cheeks out. No, yeah, my people, I fuck with her, you know, she hella cool. Huh? Yeah, man, that was, yeah. it, was a, uh, it was a dope experience to shoot that and make that, you know what I'm saying? I feel like even then, like, I was, like, still figuring out, you know, exactly how I wanted to uh, do my sound. But that was, like, I feel like the start of uh, my professional rollouts and shit like that as far as, like, boom, like, all right. Going, going, like you could tell I was going, going hard with that. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as putting out the the content shit for it. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, that was dope. He had a whole storyline. You know, the scene. You know, started off with uh, you know what she she taxing. Yeah. Then it came back to the, like basically like the makeup scene. She came back in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Y'all gonna glad you, nobody. I'm glad, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you picked up on the, on on the concept. Yeah, that was, was dope. Really that was dope, man. Yeah. I fucked with it. I fucked with it for sure. Yeah, I ain't. I just crazy because like on that album, um, it ain't it ain't no song on there, but the bonus track that's like similar to the sound that I got now. Like all of those songs are uh, 
like those are sounds that I still I'm capable of like tuning into and shit. But like the new sound that I'm working on now, only song on that album that like is close to that is the woods, but it ain't no uh, video to that one yet. Yes. I know what, one of your recent videos, Ding. Mm-hmm. And in the video, you know, highlight some of the fallen SEL um, artists in the city. Right. But the song, it's kind of like, I don't know, it didn't really like tribute the the um, vocal part of it. Why Why, was, why did you um, highlight them in the video? I, I, actually, I actually think it did. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't, somewhat, somewhat. I don't. I don't think this how this how I was uh, how I was meaning for that for that song to come across. I don't think it was like I wasn't tr- when I was originally putting the song together. It wasn't meant as like a tribute, as in the sense of like I'm finna boast everybody up and like mm-hmm. that type of sense. You know what I'm saying? Like it is respect to all of those dudes. Like I know none of them dudes personally. I've never met none of them except for. Uh, uh, Kalo Ma, I mean not not Kalo, I'm sure not Kalo Ma. Uh, but I forgot what name he even go by as a rapper, but I knew him personally. You gotcha, know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So like, uh, I don't know none of them other dudes though, but I just know the stories. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I got to, like, told you before, I kind of been away from St. Louis for hella, so I didn't really know none of this shit that's been going on. Like I, I when I left, bro, I cut everything off, shit. So when I came back. I started looking into shit, seeing everything. I'm just seeing all the shit that's going on. I'm like, shit, motherfuckers dying behind shit that, at the end of the day, bro, that shit don't really be mattering at all. And shit, the song, I, I say shit, I'm like, they treat him like a bad man, like he a demon. To not, you know, he took his last breath, now he ain't breathing. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, like the point that I was making in the song and the lyrics I was talking about, I'm talking about like, the boy, he lost his life trying to thug with his brothers. They gonna rip his name, but that ain't gonna help his mother. She just lost the son, gotta bury him with something. But he held up the family and he left them all with nothing. The, the, the shit that I'm talking about in that song, but that's that relates to damn near everybody I put in that video. Yeah. These brothers was out here, you know what I'm saying, in the streets, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying it's like I'm not judging nobody, bro. We gotta get it how we live, we gotta do it how we gotta do it, but at the end of the day, bro, you have one life. That was the point I was trying to make in that song. You got one life, bro. And I don't think a lot of young niggas even understand it. They life is not even a, a, a real thing to them, bro. They play, they, they live this shit like it's GTA for real. Really? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bro, yeah. you can die tomorrow, bro. Nobody give a fuck. It's gonna shit gonna move on, bro. How many niggas did we see die last year? Where I'm at? I'm in views in the art right now doing an interview. Ain't nobody give nobody give a fuck. <laughs> real shit. For real. Life goes on. It go on, bro, and all that tough shit, all that whoop whoop, bro. That shit don't matter. You dead now. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, bro. You got a family. You had people who loved you, cared about you, and shit. Like, fuck all that shit, bro. That was basically the, the the point that I'm trying to bring. That I was trying to bring into that shit. Like, like it's cool to live your life like you a demon, like you tough. That's what everybody want to do. But just know, shit, you get one. <laughs> That's it. It ain't no sequels, ain't no duo. That's why I said that song. <laughs> Your life in ain't no coming back. It won't be a sequel. I said that in a song. So mm-hmm. it, that's why, you know, I put them in there. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I don't, I don't aim me. No disrespect to nobody. Shit. I, I got, you know, love for everybody. I, I wish all them brothers were still here. Shit. Even though they all had quote unquote issues with each other, I don't even know. You feel me? But, you know what I'm saying? That's all I care about. Shit. Black men dying over some stupid shit. Shit, you know what I'm saying? That's all that matters to me. Well, um, you keep saying that you left San Luis. Where did you go? Uh, I went to El Paso, Texas, for like a year when I uh, first left, like 19. I moved away, shit, went there. Then after that, I lived in LA for like four years. Shit, okay. stayed there, shit, just enjoying life. Goddamn me, marketing. That's where I kind of grew a lot of my bass, music wise, and shit, just fucking with the events and shit, people out there. It was just good to kind of get out of St. Louis, for real, experience different life. It kind of teach you that it's more to shit than just what motherfuckers you used to, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's what a lot of niggas need to do too. Not just go on a vacation somewhere for a couple of days, but like really go live somewhere for a little bit and just see like how shit completely different. Like motherfuckers treat you, like culture just different, bro, all together. You don't even have that same like 
like demon on your back you feel like you got when you in your hometown. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that's where I went for that little period. Real shit, real shit. Now, what should we expect from you this year and expect from the city? The uh, remainder of your anyway. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> more music, goddamn me, more videos. I've been trying to go crazy with them. Shit, just keep it coming. Shit, uh, I, I hopefully can can work with some people, goddamn me. Motherfuckers ain't really fucking me right now though, so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna see what I can do on yeah. that on that scope. But yeah, I mean, you said you said, shit, you, like you said, you just now coming back, basically coming back to the scene after being gone for so long. But then you gotta think about this too, like some of them people they be having big head, man. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe. I mean, you know what? I don't, I don't take none of that shit personally. Like, like you said, and like, like that's how I'm already taking it. Like, shit, I'm taking it more like I gotta put my work in. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, see, ain't nobody gonna really just want to fuck with you until you show them. You know what I'm saying? You gotta show them. Like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I, I'll fuck with you. And it's crazy. Like, I've, I've been noticing it now that I've been putting in my work. Like, same motherfucker, I probably comment on that shit. Now they. Showing love to my shit. Even though they, I know you saw me before, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Niggas, niggas be out here, you know what I'm saying, make it seem like they get so much interaction on their social media that they don't be seeing shit. I mean, I understand some niggas really don't be seeing certain shit, but come, you niggas be seeing shit. Yeah. <laughs> they be seeing yeah. shit. And then they'll try, to, they'll try to make it seem like they don't <laughs> see it. And it's cool. Like, I, I, ain't, I ain't mad at you, but it's like, you know, soon as Heavy G reposted it, though, oh, nah, nah, you gone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Or as soon as yeah, you see so and so so and so reposted, now you you wanna you wanna fuck with me, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I, I definitely don't be on no shit like that. Such and such do this and that. Like, oh, let me do it. Nah, <laughs> I don't be tripping. I don't me personally. Like I say, no sure. I I don't take it personally though, bro. I just know that, that that's that's what that's what come with the game. You got for sure, for, for sure, it definitely do. I deal with it too. I deal with it too. It's like people I reach out to. Let's do him. I do an interview with this. A motherfucker, and then they coming back. Damn, <laughs> yeah. You see that? Like you said, people say, I ain't see this. Yeah. You've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> you watched this then. I ain't gonna say his name. You just said it. Yeah. Say that then. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about it. <laughs> I, know, I know what you're talking about. But uh, anyway, yeah, man. Um, Yeah, people do be on that, though. Yeah. People do, do be on that. Yeah. I just say that. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, though, like, I, I just feel like shit. I know some shit that could benefit some motherfuckers and shit. They know some shit that could probably benefit me, but it, it's about the time and the shit. I'm at the point now where I don't even want to work. Like I'm not, I'm not really like I'm not trying to reach out to nobody to work with nobody. Like if motherfucker want to work with me, shit, we can. You gotta hit me up. and be serious. Like gotta be, That's gotta be thing. real about what we gonna do. If it's just some bullshit, then I ain't really trying to do no bullshit with nobody. Like it's just That's I'm shit. over there. Wasting songs and dropping songs for no reason. A lot of niggas just be doing that. That shit did. So, do you got um, no EP album? Me say anything in the works? Uh yeah, I'm uh I'm working on uh my uh evolve album right now. Okay. That's just basically uh just signifying how I'm growing as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Elevate myself. Uh, change my sound, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's basically. I don't know what day I'm gonna drop it. I ain't really got no time frame yet. But shit, I'm working on it. I'm just trying to perfect it. You know what I'm saying? Get everything together. For now, shit, I feel like what's most important is just dropping these singles and you know what I'm saying, flooding the streets with that shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. yeah. Trying to get on Street Country Gamer too, man. And boy, yeah, unk her, okay. boy, that boy, unk out here faking. You got faking on me, man. <laughs> you got faking on me. Yeah, I'll let him, man. You fuck with you. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to see what's up. Yeah, yeah, You got any last words you'd like to share? Uh, shit, nah, man. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Shit, make sure uh, y'all stay tuned for everything I got coming. Shit, I'm going uh, to make sure I put on and, and show love to everybody, showing love to me and shit. I'm going to make a difference any way I can. Just best believe that. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the social media. Yeah, man. Follow me at Burning Malik everywhere, man. YouTube, Instagram, you know, the whole the whole works, man. Burning Malik, you know.